Hi, my name is Samar, um, but I also go by Sam on YouTube and Instagram. And my name, or my, um, my username for YouTube and Instagram is the same thing, just um, first time panner or um, first.time.panner on Instagram. Um, and this is the second video I'm ever making, at least for YouTube. And I just wanted to make this video because when I started out um, trying makeup when I was like in high school, I would watch all these videos for like makeup beginners, um, beginners, uh, tutorials for beginners, everything like that because I just needed a lot of help. But most of these or pretty much all of these tips I didn't see in any of those videos that I watched and it would have been a lot easier for me to start out with makeup had I known these things. Um, so these are going to be seven universal tips so anyone can use these. And then I do have one tip at the end that is very specifically for people who have um, the same under eyes as me. So if you have um, a dry, um, dark circle under eyes with a lot of lines and you're having trouble doing concealer that's right for you, then um, you can wait till tip number eight and that will be specifically for you. But the first seven will be for anyone. Okay, and then um, first I want to say that good makeup starts with good skincare. So if your skin is the best that it can be, then your makeup will also be the best that it can be. Um, but I'm not an expert on skincare, so I don't want to go too deep into that. My first tip is to know your undertones. And that goes for your base products and your brows very important. I think this is probably the most important tip for um, any face makeup in general because your undertone is not flexible. You might be able to go a shade lighter or darker if you're doing lighter coverage makeup or um, if you are doing something that's a little more universal like a skin tint, but if you have the wrong undertone, it's going to look weird no matter what you do. And the way you can find your undertone is, I don't remember where I saw this trick, so I'll have to find a link. But what I always see is that if um, cool tone jewelry, like silver, looks good on you, you have cooler undertones. If warmer jewelry, like gold, which is why I'm wearing gold earrings, if that looks better on you, then you most likely have warmer undertones. And... Um, if neither of those apply to you, then you probably have neutral undertones. Um, that's pretty general, so you can always take a quiz to find out what your undertones are. And it also goes deeper than that. You could be um, pink, yellow, you could have olive, golden undertones. So once you find out your undertone, stick with that and do not deviate from it. I also want to mention that you can have different um tones and undertones on your face depending on what part of your face it is for example my forehead is not only darker in shade but also it has a slightly different undertone than the rest of my face so um my forehead has slightly more red undertones but the rest of my face is just yellow golden undertones so definitely try different products if you um can get like a foundation um like what's it called blister card sample definitely try those out and see which one looks um like it blends into your skin the most oh and this also applies to brow products so if you do not have warm tone brows don't use warm tone brow products i have gone out of the house with red eyebrows because I didn't realize that I was using red tone brow products when I have neutral colored brows. So test your brow products before you use them. So my second tip is to know your skin type or skin types. My skin type is oily combos and it's changed since I was in high school, so also keep that in mind. But right now it's oily combo, so I have very oily skin in my T-zone, 
but then around my mouth especially and on my cheeks I can get dry patches and makeup will sometimes cling to that so when you're buying makeup and when you're applying makeup make sure that you understand um, what to apply where how much to apply where and there if you want to look up um, people on the internet who I have a cat fur in my mouth um, if you want to look up people on the internet, excuse me, on the internet who have the same skin type as you, it's really helpful to find recommendations for products. And um, this also applies to tip number three, which is that you should definitely be using primer. A lot of people in their videos for beginners say, oh, primer is optional, it's just an extra step, but that's not true. Makeup is so much easier when you have primer, especially if you have skin or discoloration that is irregular such as super oily or you have dry patches or um, you have like redness in some spots you should be using primer because it's going to make putting on your product so much easier and um, this can be I have so many different primers so for my t-zone I have um, because it's super oily and I have pores right here as well I um, have this poreless face primer from e.l.f. and I can use it not only in my pores but also where I'm oily because it's a silicone based primer which is more mattifying. Um, but then in my drier areas I use, this is also from e.l.f. It's the hydrating face primer and if I don't use this and I just use my pore filling one I look really dry on my cheeks and like pretty much everywhere that I'm not super oily. If you're a beginner and your makeup is not looking the best, is probably why. Make sure you're using primer and it's the correct primer for you. Also, where did I put it? Oh no. Oh, here it is. Eyeshadow primer. This is not a joke. You need eyeshadow primer. I, for the longest time, thought it was a gimmick and I thought people were wasting their money, but you need it. If you're not using this, it's going to, especially if you have oily eyelids, it's going to take you a longer time to build up the shadow. It's going to be harder to blend and um, it's not going to last all day. It's probably going to fade off in a few hours. But if you use eyeshadow primer, especially this one, this is the Milani eyeshadow primer, which is um, an alternative to the, um, what's it called? Urban Decay Primer Potion. If you have this, it'll last all day. I'll be gone for like 24 hours and all of my makeup is gone except for my eyeshadow, which looks exactly the same as when I put it on. So eyeshadow primer is no joke. You need it. And then also you can get a lipstick primer. I find that these are not as necessary because you can kind of use other things as lipstick primers. Um, I think these are just most helpful if you're using a matte, um, what's it called? A matte bullet lipstick because um, if you have crusty lips this kind of smooths it out a little bit but otherwise you can just use like sometimes I use a lip smacker because it's a little bit more waxy and less greasy than a traditional um, lip balm so if you want you can invest in a lip primer and it does help a little bit this is the ColourPop lippy sticks and it's just the primer one um and it just looks like this it's just a slightly waxy sort of lip balm but it's not really nourishing it's just to create a barrier but you should definitely use um face primer and eyeshadow primer Oh, and also you can use um, different primers depending on the look that you want to achieve. So for example, I said that this pore primer is slightly mattifying. So if you do want to go for a matte, maybe even full coverage look, this would be a better one to use. But if you want a slightly dewier, more radiant, even more sheer coverage look, then um, a lighter, more hydrating, moisturizing primer would probably be better for you. The fourth tip is to start light, then build. And this goes with any makeup product. So um, 
foundation, concealer, eyeshadow, brows, really anything that you're putting on your face. Um, you always want to start with the smallest amount possible um, just to get a base layer and then build up. So if you're applying foundation, even if you do want a full coverage look, start with a small layer. In fact, I'll show you how much I use. This is um, the foundation I'm using now. Well, it's a BB cream. It's the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream for oily skin. And this is a more light coverage product. And if I just want something light coverage, I do this amount. And even this is plenty for my whole face and to blend down my neck a little bit. Um, but this can be built slightly, um, so it can be built to a medium coverage. And if I want a medium coverage, I still start with the amount that I use when I want light coverage. And then I add about half as much more as what I started with and this um, I'll just take it on my um, sponge or my brush whatever I'm using um, oh it's if you want fuller coverage a brush might be a little bit better but anyway I take a little bit more and I put it on top this actually works better than if you just applied this amount straight away I don't know if it has to do with layering but um, it does help to start light and then build, especially if you have targeted areas that you want more full coverage in. And this also goes with eyeshadow. Sometimes you don't know how pigmented something is, especially if you're just beginning. So I recommend for anyone who's just starting out with eyeshadows and you have a shadow that's really pigmented, start with just the tiniest amount and then build it up. Tip number five is pretty simple and it's actually one that you've probably heard before, but it's to keep blending. When you think you're done blending, you're not done blending. Keep going, especially on your eyeshadow. If you can see harsh lines between two different colors, or if there's a harsh line from when you ended your shadow to the rest of your eyelid, just keep blending. What you can do is either take, um, don't use a brush that still has pigment on it, use um and i have a blending brush right here take a blending brush like this that's really fluffy um this is the morphe e22 but i don't know if it's made anymore i got it on clearance um take a very fluffy clean brush or you can dip this into a color that is either your skin tone or slightly lighter than your skin tone and just brush this along the edges of your eyeshadow to get rid of any harsh lines. Or if you're trying to blend two colors together, just use a clean brush without any other color on it and just blend along the line between the two colors. But no matter what you do, keep blending. Tip number six is to do what works best for you and your face and eye shape. So when I first started watching tutorials, I would just watch, if I wanted to do a brown and gold eyeshadow look, I would look up, oh, brown and gold eyeshadow for beginners. And then I would try to follow that tutorial and mine would end up looking so crazy. Um, well, first I probably wasn't blending that well, but also the people I was watching probably had different eye shapes than me and different skin tones than me. So whatever applies to you whether that be um, warm tone eyeshadows for your warm tone skin or if it's to watch someone who has the same eye shape as you um, hooded lids versus non hooded lids things like that just do whatever's best for you don't follow tutorials to a T especially if the person is not in the same situation as you also what um, you can do that I did is um, for pretty much a year before I started doing my own makeup, I started watching beauty tutorials, um, not even trying to learn makeup. I was just interested in watching people and their opinions. And I learned different techniques from all different people. So I would notice one person has the same skin type as me, and so I use the same primer as them. One person has the same eye shape as me, so I would use their technique when applying eyeliner. Um, 
and stuff like that. So you can pick up different techniques from different people who either might be, um, might have the same shape, skin tone, skin type as you, or you can just watch people try out different things that might give you ideas, but you don't have to do something just because someone says you do. Tip number seven is something that I even see professionals do, which is a big no-no. And that is using a highlight or a brightening concealer on your blemishes. So a lot of people use brightening concealers under their eyes if they want to um, counteract hollowed out eyes or if they just like the brightened effect under their eyes. And that's perfectly fine if you're using the concealer just for your eyes or for any other place that you want to brighten. But if you're using a concealer for blemishes or you have um, like redness or anything like that, don't use a brightening concealer. Use either a concealer that's your skin tone or a color corrector. And the reason I say that is, okay, I'll show you. I have a pimple right here. And you can kind of notice it because um, it protrudes and it's catching the light. It's highlighting itself because it's sticking out. So if you use a brightening concealer on a pimple, not only is it going to stand out from the rest of your foundation because it's a different color, but it's going to make it worse because you're highlighting and bringing out the fact that you have a pimple. So don't use brightening concealer on blemishes. Just use it where you want to brighten. Um, you can also, if you are not using concealer, you can use extra foundation in that one spot for whatever blemish or um, a discoloration you're trying to cover or you can use a color corrector specific to whatever you're trying to cover so if your pimple is red underneath or if you have dark spots you can use color correctors for that underneath your foundation or a concealer so those were seven universal tips and then i have one more tip that probably won't work for everyone um, it's just something that took me a long time to learn for myself um, because I have um, dry under eyes even though my top eyelids are oily my under eyes are very dry and they also have a lot of fine lines and lots of dark circles and they're also a little bit sunken in so it makes it even darker and I was never able to cover it with anything or if I could cover it then um, the concealer would crease so badly that it wasn't even worth it wearing concealer because it would look so bad anyway and would draw attention to my under eyes regardless. So the technique that I use is to, I'll just show you. What I do is first I make sure that my under eyes are very hydrated with um, any sort of eye cream or if you want to use extra face moisturizer make sure before you do makeup your under eyes are very hydrated then I go in with a color corrector and this is the elf color correcting stick in light I think it's for it's the light skin tones for dark circles color corrector and I think this is still sold but what I do is I take my ring finger and I get a little bit on there and I lightly dab it under my eyes and then I use a hydrating creamy concealer this is the Neutrogena radiant cream concealer healthy skin and I have two different shades to mix together I have toffee and cashew so I take the tiniest bit of each of these, so I'll do maybe that much under each eye of each one of these, and then I blend it in on top of the color corrector. And then what I do is I take, um, this is a very finely milled loose powder. It's the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Setting Powder in 3 Golden Beige just so you know and I take a very fluffy powder brush um, this is the small tapered brush from elf Emily Noel told me about this 
and I get just a very small amount of this. I swirl my brush in here and there's barely any on here. And then I still tap a lot off and just whatever is left on here, I use for both of my eyes. And then I take my finger and I very lightly press it in. That's all you need to do. Use the smallest amount of product possible and make sure you're patting it in after you set it. And you should be good. Hopefully that works for you. Um, it took me a long time to figure that out. And if it doesn't work for you, definitely try other things out and look at what other people are doing who might have the same situation as you. But um, those were all of my tips for um, makeup beginners. And I hope um, at least one of these worked for you. If anyone else has any tips, then please um, mention them in the comments or um, if you have your own video where you're talking about tips, definitely link that in the comments and we can all help each other out. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.